What is up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, in today's video, I want to talk about three misconceptions that I hear all the time about the world of quantitative trading from day traders and retail traders in particular. So without further ado, guys, let's jump into the video. The number one thing that I hear about from day traders is that there is this cabal of quantitative trading firms and large institutions that are out there to get them. That usually comes in the form of things like oh, your stops got hunted, or oh, there's some quasi-large group of conglomerate banks that are out there to get you, and they have certain levels that they put in and algorithms that they run at certain times of the market to try to catch you. I actually initially heard this really preposterous claim from a client of mine that wanted to discuss breaking into the world of quantitative trading and gave me a bit of background as to his experience day trading and as to some of the content that he's been taught from some YouTube gurus out there. Now, this video isn't made to focus on one guru or another. It's made to talk about kind of the content that they spew to their audience that leads them to believe these sorts of non-truths, these sorts of lies. What I can tell you as an industry insider that should not be controversial at all, is that nobody cares about you. Now, I don't mean that your parents don't care about you, or you don't have families and friends and dogs that love you. What I mean by that is nobody working at a quantitative trading firm, proprietary trading firm, a hedge fund or a bank is looking for you, is out there to get you. Nobody's hunting your stop losses, you aren't that important, okay? You don't move markets, your trades don't move for size, they don't matter. Even if it were the case, by the way, that there can be a strategy that involved melting the pockets of day traders and transferring money from day traders to large uh, ivory tower institutions, the idea is totally rooted in ignorance as to how markets work from a technical component, from the technological side. If you spend any time reading market data documentation, which is pretty much part of what I do for a living, you notice that all trades that you do are published on market data channels that are anonymized. There is identifiers out there that are totally anonymous, assigned to each trade and each order, that make them impossible to tie them back to an individual trader or particular entity. Okay. Losing money to big players by saying, oh, I got hunted, my stops got hunted, uh, is really just a cope and a scapegoat for day traders that consistently lose money. There's another misconception that retail traders are under, that a single person in isolation can implement quant strategies. In other words, a single person can be competitive as a jack of all trades in the world of quantitative trading. Now, I think these people that parrot this idea, or parrot sounds a little derogatory, hold this idea rather, um, they don't realize how much work, time, and effort goes into the world of quantitative trading. Firms literally have teams of over 50 people, each putting in eight hours a day to compete on a global stage against other firms and institutions that have virtually unlimited time, money, and resources to invest in squeezing every drop of alpha out of their trading activities. Not only that, but each software engineer in the world of quantitative trading that develops a career there starts by specializing in various subdomains in the organization. So you can literally be a software engineer that specializes in risk systems, which is like pre-trade risk, post-trade risk, aggregation reporting, etc. And in theory, you can have 10 plus years of experience as a software engineer doing that and never work with order entry or market data. That's how large some of these firms are. They literally have software engineers doing one thing and specializing in that one field of expertise in the world of quantitative trading such that they never touch or are exposed to other parts of the organization. Now, I'm fortunate, fortunate enough to have worked with many services spanning from order execution to market data to internal tooling to risk systems, etc. But if you were to tell me, hey, Coding Jesus, go implement those quant strategies, that doesn't mean that I, A, want to spend my time outside of work building these sorts of systems from scratch, and B, it doesn't mean that I'm arrogant enough to think that I can outpace these firms who have dozens of employees working around the clock, as I mentioned. So when somebody asks me a question like, why don't you just, you know, go implement your own quant strategies on your own? That question is really rooted in ignorance. And I don't blame somebody for asking that question because the world of quantitative trading is so mysterious. But as an industry insider, what you realize is that the more you know, the more that you work on these sorts of critical systems in conjunction with other bright individuals, the more you understand just how futile it is 
to approach this industry as a single person and compete on the same playing field as an individual. All right, now the last misconception, and I'm laughing a little because this is actually the funniest one, in my opinion, is that Jim Simmons and quantitative trading firms use technical analysis. What I usually hear from somebody maybe in the comment section is, huh, quants don't use TA? Tell that to Jim Simmons. <laughs> okay. When people say this, they're usually referring to like a clip from something that Jim Simmons said years ago without context. And I'll fill in the context for you guys. Don't worry. And so before I even continue, let's look at this clip together. But gradually, we found more and more and more and more anomalies. None of them is so overwhelming that you're going to clean up on a particular anomaly. Because if they were, other people would have seen them. So they have to be subtle things. And you put together uh, a collection of these subtle anomalies and you begin to get something that will predict pretty well. So here he's talking about predict pretty well. And what he's referring to is using historical price data to predict future movements. And people in the world of technical analysis will take this statement and say, well, oh, he's using previous price data. He's looking at, I don't know what they think, like cup and handle or whatever. And he's using that to tell where prices will be going based off of, you know, previous historical trends. Now, what these people usually miss out on is the next literal 30 seconds of the interview. So I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let Jim Simmons debunk the own misconceptions that day traders have been spewing out there that he and people like him and other large quantitative trading firms, not even large, I mean, big or small, use technical analysis. Let's take a look. How elaborate are these things? Because in my head, I'm imagining, you know, some equation like uh, like Pythagoras equation, and you put a few numbers in and something spits out. But are these giant beasts of equations and algorithms or are they, are they simple things? Uh, it, well, the, the system as it is today is, is extraordinarily elaborate, but it's not a whole lot of, it, you know, it's, it's what's called machine learning. Okay, now he's talking about the techniques that he uses in order to make certain predictive bets. Okay, machine learning, not technical analysis, not cup and handle, not head and shoulders, knees and toes or whatever people use. He's talking about machine learning in particular. Now, he even goes into more depth as to predictive power being just one very small subdomain of quantitative trading in which machine learning, not TA, is used. But he also talks about other subdomains. It's mostly statistics and uh, some... Uh some probability theory and uh, but I can't get into you know what things we do do use and what things we don't use we, we reach for different things that might come that might be effective uh, so we're very universal we don't have any any uh, but it's a big computer model so that's where he really drops the bomb he drops the bomb by clearly referring to advanced statistical models crafted by experts in machine learning who have spent decades collectively in their field. He's not referring to your favorite YouTube, get rich quick, grifter, TA seller, course seller, whatever. All right. There's one more piece at the very end of this video that I think is worth mentioning where he discusses the composition of people that work in quantitative trading and the techniques that they use. Improving it. We have about 100 PhDs working for the firm. That's what I mean. I mean, how did you get to that point? Did you start to think we, we just, need this, we need that? What did we just hired smart people? My, my my algorithm has always been you get smart people together. There you go. A couple of seconds. He has over a hundred PhDs at the firm, and this was an interview from a very long time ago. So if you really think that a hundred PhDs equipped with the most cutting edge understanding of computational models, uh, markets, machine learning, and statistical techniques are using your favorite YouTube guru's $297 course on technical analysis, then you're beyond saving. So hopefully you guys understood about these three misconceptions. Hopefully I've debunked each and every single one of them, or at least shed some light as to what they are and why they're wrong. If you'd like to speak to me one-on-one -on -one to break into the world of quantitative trading, guys, link in the description box below. You can book my time via Calendly. If you'd like to watch this video early, you can become a patron. You get access to the exclusive Discord where we just talk to each other. We do monthly calls, etc. Most of the people there are very like-minded and in breaking into the space. And if you'd like to follow me outside of YouTube on Instagram, sharing my daily life, almost nothing quant-related, disclaimer, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Cheers.